He's so talented that I get him every time with that. And I, I enjoy that. It gives me a little bit of satisfaction. There we go. Patrick, can I interrupt for just a second? We got a hand up. We got a hand up. Yep, go ahead. Um, Rita's in the audience. Her um, the screen name right now is Kathy Pinio. Okay. If Jonathan could move her over, that would be excellent. Thank you. All right. Hi, Rita. Hi, Rita. Hello. Thank you. Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag. The United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would anyone like to take anything out of the consent agenda? Now would be the time to do that. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? You have an emotion. No, I have a second. Second. Can I have a roll call, please, Mariah? Kelly Allen. Aye. Anna Ayotte. Aye. Mike Rocha. Aye. Rita Kenahan. Aye. Patrick McHugh. Aye. Okay, we are on the spot spotlight. Three one wellness week. We have our principal. Hello, Sonia. I get you. You have your Tiger Woods shirt on today. That's good. I like it. I am wearing red because today, let me see, today was wear red, wear red. representing the vegetable group. Hmm. Oh, no. Wait, red, red. Sorry. Red is representing the fruit group. Thus, my red. I like it. I'm on live, hon. I know. <laughs> My husband thinks I'm Tiger Woods too. Okay, so this week, March 8th to the 12th is Wilbur McMahon Schools Wellness Week. And we had a collaboration with our PE teachers and um, Mrs. Miller and Mrs. Dunn um, to put together the, the student side of the Wellness Week. And then Ms. Sedgwick put together the staff side of the Wellness Week in collaboration with Ms. Cannon. So I'm going to give you a little bit of the highlights of the student side, and then I'm going to ask Carolyn to talk a little bit about the staff side. So Monday for this week was Mindful and Moving Monday, where students were encouraged to wear orange to represent the green group. Um, they were encouraged to take a walk along the Dundery Brook Trail with their class. The social emotional learning um, prompt for the day was be mindful. Before you speak today, ask yourself, is it necessary? Is it right? Is it kind? Tuesday was Taco Tuesday, where um, everyone was asked to wear green to represent the vegetable group. Taco stands for talk about making healthy choices, ask for your favorite veggies at dinner, consume more fruits throughout the day, and offer to help friends make healthy choices. The social emotional um, prompt for the day was make the right choice, even if it may be hard for you to do so. Today, Wednesday, was wear red, representing the fruit group. Um, it was water Wednesday. Everybody was asked to drink the recommended 64 ounces per day of water. All students were given a bottle of water at lunchtime, um, compliments of Chartwells. The social emotional prompt for the day was if you get frustrated today, don't give up. Tell yourself, I can do it. And then coming up for the rest of the week, we have Thoughtful Thursday. Everybody is encouraged to wear blue to represent the dairy group. Um, the social emotional cue for the day was deal, is going to be deal with any angry feelings you may have in a healthy way. Breathe, read, draw, write, exercise, or talk it out. And then we will end up the week with Fitness Friday, where students are encouraged to wear purple to represent protein group. Um, and the social emotional cue will be to notice when someone is showing courage beyond being, to show in, let's start that again. Notice when someone is showing courage 
being kind and praise them for it. Um, they, we've also had events, the fifth grade made um, bumper sticker banners that are along the wave wall. So as people go down the hallway, they can see the words of encouragement from the fifth graders. Um, it's been a lot of fun because I mean, this week we've been able to do some things like just having the kids wear different things and have different events each day has kind of brought a sense of normalcy back. That's been one of the things mentioned by several staff members and I think the kids are really enjoying it. Um, the adults are involved also and we've had every day there's a highlight of the day um, put together by Ms. Sedgwick and I'm going to tell you that my favorite part has been the infused water so if Carolyn can give you a little bit of, uh, of an idea of what the week has looked like for the adults. Sure thank you Sonia. Uh, so I kind of launched off of Noelle's uh, format for the students with the different colors and the themes for the week but I also wanted to acknowledge uh, the success we had last week, uh, last year, excuse me, with the staff wellness week, where we had cooking demonstrations from Chartwells and were able to partner and, and just bring in really fun and exciting things for staff from uh, wellness screenings to, um, you know, I think it culminated in a nice friends kind of coffee hour on the Friday. So putting all of that together, what we came up with for this year, as Sonia mentioned, was every day we have a different infused water. At the beginning of the year, I don't know if you remember, but um, the superintendent gave everybody as a little welcome back gift, a bottle, I wish I had mine with me, but it's currently in the fridge, in which you can put fruit. And I worked with Jamie this year and every day we've had a different kind of surprise fruit infusion. And we put it in the refrigerators in the staff room so that Everything is individually wrapped and safe and sanitary and people have been loving it and putting just whatever combination, excuse me, Jamie has come up with into their water. Um, in addition to that, uh, the superintendent has offered up a free side salad to anyone who wants it during the week. And I think Jamie um, in the cafeteria served eight salads to staff members yesterday. It was four the day before, and I'll check in with her in the morning to see how many we had today, but the numbers are increasing. Um, every day we have, as Sonia said, a, a theme, and I've linked articles from the EAP, the Employee Assistant Programs app, that seem relevant. Um, you know, from Monday, it was uh, being mindful. Uh, Tuesday, you know, why healthy eating matters. So for the theme of the day, there is a link through their wellness app. Um, then every day we have a, a group chat, but really it goes to me so that people have a sense of um, privacy in answering questions. We, we, we have just a group message going on and we've gotten so much wonderful feedback and I'm gonna find a way to anonymize yet encapsulate you know, people's feelings on mindfulness and meditation and how do they cope with stress? And, you know, today's it was, you know, how do you stay hydrated? What other healthy ways have you found to do that throughout your stressful day? Um, we have had, for those who respond, we've entered them into a drawing and we've had daily drawings and thanks to partners, um, the Little Compton French Coalition, offered up some prizes, uh, the central admin brought in some prizes, <laughs> excuse me, so that um, we have two winners a day. And just it draws people into the HR office. Um, we have wonderful talks about wellness and that's just been a, a very fun part of it. In addition, um, the trust has their ongoing fitness classes. Um, yesterday it was Pilates, today it was a boot camp. Um, we've got another strength class and a meditation class tomorrow. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been fun. It's going along. The water is a huge hit and already getting tips and ideas to improve upon things for next year. One of them being, um, I had trouble finding fresh basil for the water infusions. So I was talking to our Oasis coordinator today about starting herbs in the greenhouse um, for next year. So just little tweaks and fun things like that. So I don't know if the superintendent has anything to add if I forgot anything. 
But no, that's just excellent. It's just been, you know, really um, interactive and everyone's loving it. The teachers are loving this, the squish yesterday. Carolyn put um, stress balls everywhere and, you know, <laughs> we're just gripping them and, um, and, and Dove dark chocolate, which is just to die for. Um, and, and that is definitely, you know, a lot of our, a lot of us, that's our weakness. It has just been so supportive and affirming um, for staff, for admins, for all of us. We're all feeling best from this pandemic year um, in different ways. And um, I don't think we realized it until Wellness Week, how much we needed just little um, tweaks to our day, reminders to drink water, Reminders that water can be infused with delicious combos of fruit and herbs. Um, reminders to allow ourselves an indulgence like Dove chocolate, don't go overboard. Um, and just watching the teachers choose their raffle prizes, which is the, it's just the sweetest thing. And I couldn't have come at a better time. So thank you so much, Sonia. Uh, and Noel and um, Jean and everyone involved on, on the student side. And thank you so much, Carolyn Sedgwick, you truly knock it out of the park as an HR coordinator for our district. Thank you. I feel very uh, calm now for some reason. Very, I feel very in touch right now. <laughs> thank you for that and everything you guys are doing. Three, two, social emotional learning report. Sonia on mute, maybe. Sorry about that. That's okay. um, I'm just going to give you a highlight of some of the things that we've talked about with the past couple of meetings, and then I'll um, let Mrs. Miller chime in if she has anything to add. So um, we have been meeting approximately once a month. Um, we have a, a group of regular attendees, um, including um, Mary Elizabeth, Jenna Magnuski, Terrence Caldwell, Holly Allen, um, myself, Jamie Sunderland, um, Megan Wardell, Megan Boudreau. Um, we've had Karen Marion attend. So we've got a pretty wide variety of people that have been attending. Um, we started off the year by addressing transition issues related to coming back to in-person learning. So we were really attending to the emotional well-being of our students. And um, we've kind of continued to have conversations about how that has changed from um, September to now. Um, as we get more and more children back into the building, we've had some discussions about how best to welcome in the kids. Because the kids that are only recently coming back, they've really been out of school for a month. So we've talked about how to help ease their transition into school um, when they come back. And we're hoping to get even more and more of our students back before the end of the school year. Um, so we've had a lot of issues, um, talked a lot about that. We've talked about how we definitely are hitting um, some pandemic fatigue and continuing to have ongoing conversations about how to address that, which is one of the reasons why the Wellness Week, it was such a good timing for that event so that we can um, you know, just get people pumped up and, um, you know, thinking about being mindful and some of those types of things. Um, we have had continuing conversations about Open Circle and Choose Love and how that dovetails nicely into all the things that we do throughout the school year. Um, that's one of the things, the social emotional prompts have been addressed through the Open Circle and Choose Love. So those have been instrumental in our wellness week this week. Um, we've also talked about how um, various events are being addressed within the school setting. For instance, the, the George Floyd's death, we had talked about how we had addressed that as a school. Um, we've uh, beginning to have some conversations about gender issues. Um, we had uh, someone request to talk about um, uh, the recent controversy surrounding stereotypes in Dr. Seuss books. So I think we're going to talk about that at an upcoming um, meeting. And we've also talked about how various things are addressed in, in our social studies curriculum. We've also discussed the possibility of bringing a speaker in, a motivational speaker for our, particularly for our middle school to address some of those, uh, some of the issues that they, um, they face with regard to the pressures that are faced by um, the 
te young teenagers, adolescents. Um, and I think that it is a pretty good representation of the things that we've done in the Social Emotional Learning Committee. This month, we kind of are taking a hiatus because we invited everybody to attend the Once a Girl, Always a Boy book club, which is taking place tomorrow night. Um, that's also been a topic that has um, dovetailed nicely into the Social Emotional Learning Committee. And Mary Elizabeth, did I leave anything out? I don't think so. Um, the um, February for Black History Month, we did have the Black Storytellers, um, which last year Len Cabral came in person and was very well received. He did a lower elementary presentation and a middle school presentation. Um, so this year they did a virtual, which Sonia can talk about. They had a few different offerings that we took advantage of. So we were able to offer four different um, storyteller sessions to our students. And they took place over the course of a month. Um, so there was an offering each week. A couple of them were tailored to the younger kids and a couple of them were tailored to the older kids. But then there were some Q&A sessions um, that individual, some individual classes got to participate with. And I actually had um, one of the authors popped into a kindergarten class to answer questions. And I actually had the storyteller contact me after the fact, telling me how, how engaged our kindergartners were and what a delight they were to speak with. So it was very well received. Um, and that's definitely something that we would look into doing in future years. I think it's really admirable how so many so many um, of the opportunities that have been live opportunities in the past, how, how various organizations have adapted to doing things in a virtual format. So though the experience is not exactly the same that they would have had, it's, you know, I think it's, it's, there are some really positive elements to this that are um, making, I think, even broader access to some things. So I, you know, I give the organizations like the Black Storytellers and Trinity Rep who managed to put a Christmas Carol on in a virtual format. There's so many of those organizations that are working very hard to come up with um, enriching opportunities for our students. So, and we are looking, like I said, we are looking to book a um, speaker for probably April-ish. All right, thank you. It's nice to hear from Mary Elizabeth and Carolyn. At this point in the agenda, I'd like to, uh, if there are no objections, I'd like to move agenda item 8.4 to the top of the agenda. Are there any objections? Okay, not seeing any objections. Um, 8.4 is consider, discuss, and vote to approve an amendment to extend for one year the high school contract with Portsmouth School Department, not to exceed $13,500 per pupil with no minimum numbers of students. What I'd like to do here is I uh, would like to give a, a quick history. Uh, I wanna tell the people about the process and the timeline. Then I'm gonna go to John McNamee, who is going to give us a report on agenda 8.4 and what uh, effect, uh, impact it would have on our budget if it was uh, approved. Um, then I'm gonna let the public, the public will be able to speak. Uh, you have three minutes. If you're going to uh, speak, just give your name and your address for Mariah, because she'll text me and say, I need a name and I need an address. So I'm already ahead of that. <laughs> so do that. Uh, the public can, can talk about what they've heard. Then I'm gonna go to the agenda. Um, I'll ask for a motion, I'll ask for a second. Um, if, I get a, if I get a motion in a second, we'll be uh, under discussion. The school committee will discuss it. And the audience will also have another bite of the apple. You could also have some more public input there. And after we have exhausted public input, we have exhausted the school committee discussing it, we will take a vote. So that's how it's, my playbook's gonna go. So if everybody could, uh, if that's okay, is there any questions on the playbook? I don't see any. Okay, so real quickly, the history of um, Little Compton kids going to a uh, high school in another town. I went back to 1970. I talked to almost 10 people over the past weekend, a couple of weekends ago, were nice to, uh, to discuss it with me, former school committee members uh, and some other people. 
Uh, so I learned a little bit. So I just wanted to share it quickly and, and bring us up to where we are today. So in 1970, I didn't go into the 60s. So from 1970 to 1978, our little Compton students went to Portsmouth High School. Uh, in the 79, 80 year, uh, they ended that relationship and they went to Middletown. And they stayed in Middletown from 1979 to 2000, almost a 25 year period that they stayed in Middletown. I didn't get much information on that period, um, but uh, that's what I have. So we're there from 79 to 2000. So 2001 came along and the Little Compton School Committee decided that they wanted to go out with an RFP and they did so. Uh, and three schools uh, bid on our Little Compton students. It was Tiverton, Portsmouth and Middletown, which the kids are already there. So all the school com committee members visited all those three schools. The three schools came in and gave presentations. They had a, a lot of meetings. It was very contentious for what I understand because the kids were there for 25 years. So they had built up relationships. Um, so it was uh, quite a, a lot of meeting, a lot of meetings, a lot of people wanted to stay, a lot of people didn't. So the vote came down and it came down three to two. It came down three for Portsmouth uh, and two for Tiverton. Uh, so I found that interesting. So we fast forward to 2010. So the kids uh, were already there now for 10 years and the contract was expiring with Portsmouth and 2010 came and the school committee in 2010 also sent out an RFP and they went out for a bid and three schools applied, Tiverton, Portsmouth and Middletown. And the school committee went and toured all the schools. They did their due diligence. The schools came to the gym, uh, and packed the gym and they had meetings. Uh, they also packed the gym in 2000 also. Uh, the gym was packed in 2000 and also in, in 2010 and they voted to go to Portsmouth. Um, so which brings us to now you know, and, and it seems from talking to all these people, how Little Compton decides where they go to high school is they send out an RFP, they do their due diligence, they pack the gym, they have meetings, they have their stakeholders uh, speak, and uh, we take a vote. So now it's not normal times and we're in COVID. Um, so what was, what we're going to do now, and I'm just going to switch papers here, is our professionals, and our professionals are a superintendent the attorney and the business manager came to the school committee last year, late last year and said, we could go for a one year COVID emergency extension of our contract. So that put into effect a subcommittee. So Little Compton put together a little, a, uh, for a um, high school negotiation subcommittee. And we've met, I think Mariah, how many times have we met? I, uh, 10, 10 times. And, uh, also, uh, Portsmouth also put in a uh, high school subcommittee. And what these subcommittees do is, what, what we did, what the Little Compton subcommittee did is we charged a superintendent and business manager to negotiate with Portsmouth's superintendent and business manager. Um, if anyone knows Tom Kenworthy, he's an outstanding uh, a superintendent over there and they're lucky to have him. Um, and Emily Copeland is the chair over there. She's outstanding too. They really care about kids and and, and uh, everything they do over there. So our friends in Portsmouth and, uh, and here in Little Compton, we had many meetings uh, with the, sub, uh, the subcommittee charged the, the um, superintendent and the business manager. And the superintendent and business manager came back to the subcommittee to report out to us. And that went back and forth. And what we've decided is the subcommittee, Little Compton subcommittee is prepared now to report to the full committee. And that's why you see um, agenda 8.4 on there. That's our recommendation. The people that were on the Little Compton's high school subcommittee were uh, Roger Lord, uh, Michael Rocha and myself. Obviously we had our professionals on there um, also. Um, so- Excuse me, Patrick. Yes. Can you just clarify that Roger Lord was not on that with us? Did I say Roger Lord? I'm sorry, I meant- uh, Joe, Joe Quinn. Quinn. You know, sometimes they, I mix them together, Roger and, and Joe, <laughs> in my mind. Joe Quinn, sorry. So that's what the history is. That's the process that we took. And we are here today to vote on that. So I'm going to go stick to my playbook and I'm going to go to John McNamee and ask him what the impact will be on 8.4 on the school budget 
if it was adopted tonight. Uh, thank you, Patrick. So the impact would, would, would not be on the FY22 budget. The impact would be on the FY23 budget, next year's budget. So currently in the FY22 budget, we have 1,047,100 budgeted for uh, Portsmouth High School tuition. Uh, at uh, the tuition rate of 13.5 and 22.23, using a, a total number of students of 93, which is what we're projecting would be the enrollment in 22-23 uh, year, that comes to a million. 255,500. So the impact on the, uh, well, the increase in the Portsmouth High School tuition in the FY22-23 year will be 208,400. Thank you, John. Sorry, I was muted. I'm gonna open up the public input if anyone would like to comment before we discuss this. This is a raise your hand feature. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah. Raise your hand. And um, you also have another by the apple. Roger Lord has his hand up to let him unmute. Hi, Roger. Hi, hi, Pat. <laughs> did, you enjoy your, did you enjoy your time on the high school subcommittee? Yeah, it was hard work. Okay, I appreciate your contributing. <laughs> my only question is, why are you doing this? Oh, that's a good question. So, you know, there are our professionals have told us that uh, we have an opportunity because of COVID that we can't fill the gym, we can't get our stakeholders in, we can't do what we've done in previous decades, um, and also, I guess the schools are in flux with COVID. Their budgets are not what they would be if this we weren't in this emergency and we have an opportunity here to do an emergency uh extension covid contract um i don't know if anybody else could uh explain that better but that's my understanding from our professionals yeah can i just piggyback on that a little bit the other thing too Roger, is that under our contract our existing contracts which expires in june of 2022 we have to give a one year notice by June 30th of 2021. So basically we have to make a decision on what we're gonna do, either stay with them or we're not, but we have to give them that notice one year in advance. So that's why it's it's being pushed and we because we can't get all the players and, and get all the public input the way we should be properly doing this, that's why we're entertaining this idea as of right now. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I don't see any other um, public input. So I will consider a motion to vote to approve the amendment of 8.4. Do I have a motion? I will make that motion. So I a, do I have a second? Second. We have a second. Mariah, you can see who won that second. Oh, whatever. Pretty close. Now we are in discussion uh, with the committee. So committee, is there any questions that you have for the professionals or any questions about this? Do I have a question? Rita, go ahead. What are our options? Well, well, historically, we if we were in an emergency pandemic situation, we would uh, go off for an RFP like we always have, um, and 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 do that process. Uh, so since we don't have that, uh, there's been negotiations with Portsmouth, and Portsmouth, uh, by the way, has done the same thing. They have their own subcommittee, and their subcommittee, after negotiating with our professionals, report back their professionals report back to their subcommittee. So they've been doing that uh, just like we've been doing that. And so we've come to the end of our negotiation and we felt uh, that it was time to go to the full school committee report out and say, here's uh, what we suggest after all of these negotiations with Portsmouth 
the best thing to do for Little Compton at this time. Um, so this either gets voted up or it gets voted down. If it gets voted down, then we would continue and go off for an RFP like we have in the past. Um, and John McNamee, how, how um, we have to report to Portsmouth and let them know that we're going out for an RFP uh, by June 30th. What's the latest we could go off for an RFP, John? Well, uh, if if we have to give notice to them, uh, obviously by uh, this June, so June 30th, 2021, we'd have to give notice that um, we may not be um, utilizing their services for our high school students. So at that point, they would be on notice. What we were trying to do with an RFP is do that prior to giving that notice. Um, but uh, in the pandemic, it's just wouldn't be, uh, we, we wouldn't have the ability to, as Patrick said, to get all the stakeholders together to kind of evaluate uh, the various proposals that would come in. So um, the alternative would be to then uh, put the RFP out uh, if we get the extension is to put the RFP out uh, either uh, probably late fall or early winter so that by the spring we would have um, selected um, uh, an organization that would be uh, educating our, uh, our high schoolers in Little Compton. Is that uh, yeah, thank you for thank you for clarifying things. So we really um, really don't have much of an option here, and this is the um, the best. This is it. Yeah, the best we could get in yeah the negotiation. Is there a hand? Heather McCarthy has a hand up. Yep. Yeah. Hello, Heather. Go ahead. Um, I'm just curious, it's a 20% increased cost. Are there that many more students or is this just part of the pandemic? Like this is your option. So I think you're, what you're referring to Heather is that currently uh, we, we pay $10,400 for a student to Portsmouth. And if we do this extension in 22, 23, it'll be 13,500 per student. Is that what you're asking? Correct. Right, so that was, came out of the negotiations. That's where this, that's where it, we've landed in our negotiations with Portsmouth. If I may, Heather, um, Chair? Sure, go uh, ahead. Address this question. Yep. Portsmouth started at 15.5, which is the Newport County Career and Technical Education uh, tuition rate. Obviously we found that unacceptable. Uh, then we asked for a 15% bulk discount because we're not sending one or two or six students, we're sending between 90 and 100. And uh, they rejected our um, request for a 15% bulk discount. The 15% um, bulk discount rate came from another contract. We all researched the subcommittee researched Jamestown's um, two contracts with um, North Kingstown and Narragansett. So they do give their students a choice. Uh, about 135 of their students go to North Kingstown and about uh, 25 or so um, go to Narragansett for various reasons. And a bulk discount is often. Then uh, Portsmouth, um, met us in the middle. They said, we'll give you a 12 and a half percent discount. That is our firm final offer. It is quite a price hike. If you look at the current tuition rate and next year's tuition rate, um, the 10 year contract that we have with Portsmouth was, um, you know, a win-win uh, for both districts at the time. And I think Portsmouth uh, may not feel that way anymore uh, for whatever reason, they, <laughs> they seem to come up with several. Um, they understand this is a, a steep increase and that 
you know, um, it may not float. Um, it may sink tonight and uh, they're, they're aware of that. Um, so here we are, we're sort of um, in a pandemic, you know, caught between a rock and a hard place. We don't have the means and methods to bring all stakeholders together, uh, like the 50 year history of uh, Little Compton researching um, and um, vetting all the districts that uh, submit a proposal um, for the request for proposal. And um, we certainly can't pack any arenas. Um, no one is certain that the Zoom modality would um, you know, really leverage um, all the agency that stakeholders could and should have in the process. So a one year emergency extension is um, appropriate and legal and it is an option. And that's why we're here and the school committee has a, a decision to make. Thank you, Superintendent. Anyone else, uh, do any hands or do I see uh, the public or anyone on the committee before we take our vote? Yeah, just- I have a hand, I have a hand. Hannah, yeah. Sorry, Mike. It's okay, go ahead. Thank you, Hannah. I'll go with, I'm gonna go to Dave Middleton after you. Oh, go ahead, Hannah. Could you just go over what the new timeline would be um, if we vote to approve this? as far as floating an RFP and the next um, time we would really need to meet about the high school? John McNamee? Yes, yeah, so the, um, we've discussed, we've, we've got a few options. We can, we can uh, look at putting the RFP out in the fall, but that might be a little bit too soon. Uh, so we do have the ability to do that. Um, in um, the spring or late winter and the spring in order to get a decision by uh, 63022. Uh, we also have the ability to defer that out uh, to the following fall if we, if we wanted to, because we really need to um, uh, make a decision by the end of uh, June of 2023, but obviously uh, whoever we uh, select, we'd, we'd want to give them uh, ample notice. So um, it would be, um, I, I think we'd have to look at, you know, uh, when we can get together as a group and, and maybe the fall of uh, 21 might be a little bit too soon, but uh, clearly, um, maybe the uh, late winter, early spring would be uh, an ideal time to do that. We have the rubric ready to go. We have the RFP uh, ready to go. So uh, we just have to tweak that. So we're ready to, to move on this uh, when, when we think the time is right. Does that answer your question, Hannah? Yes, thank you. Mike Rush, I'm gonna to go to you, then I'm gonna to go to Dave. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I mean, the, one of the things that the committee was concerned about, just so everybody's aware, is that if we did go, if we decide to turn this down and go out to an, with an RFP, is that we don't know what kind of results we're going to get from the other schools. Um, who's going to be willing to uh, bid on this? And because of their uncertainty, and um, that's one thing. I guess the second thing that's, that's come up is that this is a steep increase. We're aware of that, um, not to say that we're happy with it, but it is a steep increase. That being said that, and I think this was brought up many times during the meeting that this is for only one year uh, is what we're trying to go after. Um, we would wanna go into this with a better rate if we were looking at a multiple year contract. So it's a little bit of give and take, um, it wasn't taken lightly, I can say that. Um, I was kind of surprised on how high the numbers came back myself, but I mean, the committee did uh, try and I, and I think as of right now, this is probably our best option uh, going forward. And 
hopefully you guys will support this just so that we can uh, get this past us for this one year extension as of right now. Thanks, good. Mike. Yeah, Mike, Mike brings up a good point. It, it'd be nice if we could uh, negotiate a five to you know ten year deal. Um, we would have we could spread the money out and, and maybe get a better rate. But uh, that's not the emergency where we're in right now. Um, I'm gonna go to Dave Middleton. I'm gonna un unmute Dave. Dave. Uh, hi everyone. Hope hi Dave. Everyone's How are you? Doing well. Good. Good. Dave, um, can you give Mariah your address? Yeah, she's David Middleton, ninety-eight. Long Highway in Little Compton. She is on me about these addresses. She had the other two people's addresses already, by the way. <laughs> um, just a quick comment. It, it, this, the negotiation feels somewhat more like a hostage negotiation from my perspective. Um, the question that I have is uh, what bearing does the 13,500 increase for one year have on future year negotiations? I Mike kind of touched on that, that of course, if we have additional years to be able to negotiate on, you know, for that we could get a better rate, but what's our next starting point is uh, when we have to do this again with Portsmouth in uh, 2023, I guess for that year's budget, are we starting at 13 fire? Are we starting at a higher number than that? Yeah, that's a great question, uh, uh, Dave. And we've obviously discussed that and we realize that uh, if we vote that, I mean, it's 13 five and uh, the next negotiation is going to reflect that. Uh, hopefully we can negotiate a, a longer term deal and it's going to go down. Uh, the hostage situation, um, Portsmouth, uh, uh, Dr. Kenworthy and uh, uh, Emily Copeland, they've been outstanding um, with us, professional. Um, the meetings that uh, we've had with them have been great. Um, they're our friends. Uh, they want us back. Um, and I'm certainly a lot of people here, I think, uh, uh, really like Portsmouth High School. Um, so it, it was, you know, being involved in it and, and listening to all the negotiations it wasn't it wasn't uh, like that in, on, on my part or a portion's part um so anyone else want to address dave's uh questions better than me go right ahead uh, superintendent could i just have a sure go ahead rita sure i i'd like to um i, I recall uh, pre-pandemic when we were considering putting RFPs out to, because we were anticipating this would happen. Sure. So, and there was an appetite for RFPs because it's important, it's critical in Little Compton to give families and, and parents the choice for high school. So that's the direction we were absolutely going in pre-pandemic. Here we are in 2021 and yeah, we understand uh, that Portsmouth is under considerable pressure budget-wise. We see what they're going through. I go to their meetings and I understand they are under considerable financial pressure. So I can see why these, and to Dave Middleton's point, yes, seemingly it, the numbers look hostile, but we are, it's a rock in a hard place. We cannot let our families down. We can't let our students down. Clearly everyone knows we have to keep this going. So when we look towards the next RFP session, I think we have to be more like healthy and vigorous in getting something reasonable. So I, I really appreciate the committee's work, Mike, uh, Roger, Joe, Patrick, thank you so much for your commitment. Uh, Portsmouth High School has been fabulous for our kids. My kids went there. So, um, but we just have to be really careful about the next go around. Thank you, Rita. If I may, I think I, I could clarify a bit there. And Rita, you make a good point. Everyone, um, thank you, parents, um, the McCarthy's and the Middletons. Portsmouth has made it clear, we've made it clear to them that once we float an RFP, uh, this arbitrary number will absolutely um, be superseded by an actual metric based on um, reality, and that would be the unified chart of accounts. And so um, Superintendent Kenworthy did make it clear that this is a one and done, um, and that there would be a clean slate thereafter. We made it clear that we have a metric using UCOA, and that is a starting point for us. Um, for a true multi-year um, negotiation. So 
it is quite the price hike, and, and you know, I think we've all lost sleep <laughs> over um, you know the past three months that we've met quite a bit. And as Rita said, uh, um, Dr. Canahan said, Portsmouth's money woes are not um, a secret, uh, making headlines. And their view is that the increases in our tuition rate over the 10 years, uh, they were not sufficient. They should not have been tied to cost of living. Uh, they should have been more, um, a more relevant um, metric like uh, the increase in the district budget, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we beg to differ, but that's their position. Um, we don't affirm it, but we honor it. And we understand that, you know, we're in a predicament right now um, that the entire world is in, uh, that every process seems upside down and we've had to sort of regroup and um, tweak expectations. Uh, if this were a multi-year negotiation, there's just no way there would be a $3,000 um, boost from the get-go. just wouldn't happen. But I think this is um, the best of the worst in this pandemic when it comes to the next steps for um, the RFP process. This is the best of, of the worst case scenarios during this um, global health crisis. So, and, and fiscal um, crisis for municipalities and states. So, welcome. You. You know. David, do you have a follow up, Dave? Am I uh, unmuted still? Yes. yes um, no, I'm good. That, that was helpful information. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, David. Thank All you. right. I'm still hunting for hands. I see one. Holly. I'm, I'm wondering if um, Mr. McNamee has any um, information on how this additional 200000 plus is going to affect our budget in the following years. Uh, well, it's it, it's definitely going to affect the budget, and how we fund it is is going to be something that we're going to have to uh, uh, take a look at. It it does give us um, a little bit of time to put some uh, plans together to fund that increase. Um, we we are, um, as you'll see tonight, we're we're looking towards a break even for FY twenty one, um, but. Uh, Hopefully, we could uh, potentially look at trying to uh, manage a little bit of a surplus in um, FY22 to help offset that uh, increase. Uh, but again, uh, we would have to combine that with um, looking at some uh, potential cuts in 2023 that, uh, in order to help to, to fund this. We are limited, obviously, to no more than uh, a four percent increase in what the town appropriates us year over year. Uh, so um, we have to uh, take that into consideration uh, as we, uh, you know, as we put a plan together for that. Thank you, John. But it does does give us a little bit of time to work on it. Thank you. That's good, Polly. Mm -hmm. Any other hands? Hey, yeah, Patrick. Oh, I've got a hand. There's one. Go ahead. One other thing that has not been mentioned is uh, in past years that the RFPs have basically drawn in Middletown, Portsmouth, and Tiverton. Um, during our discussions, it's been brought up to our attention that we could potentially cross into Massachusetts and actually entertain through Westport, Dartmouth. Um, whether we go there or not, that's one of the story. But the thing is that it opens up more players. It brings in more bids for us, more proposals to basically be able to keep our numbers more in check so that we're not just dealing with three. Uh, hopefully we can get more, but that is an opportunity. Um, and again, is this the right time to do that? Uh, no. Would it be ideal? Yes. But just so everybody knows that those are other options for us. 
um, going forward, just so that everybody's aware. I'm good, Patrick. John Anderson, are you on this call? Yeah, I'm on. John, just real quickly, the, the mic brings up uh, crossing state lines for other high schools. What's the law on that one? Sure, you have to have um, uh, ride approval, but ride is approving children from all over the state of Rhode Island to attend programs in Massachusetts as we speak. Indeed, Little Compton has had students in the past who have attended schools in Massachusetts. Um, so attending schools in Massachusetts is nothing new. Thank you. Any other hands? <clears throat> If I may, I'll just share. I know Mike did bring up Westport. Uh, the Westport superintendent um, last year did send us a pre-interest, pre-RFP interest letter. And uh, he listed 12,900 as the tuition rate for Westport. It was obviously, it was an interest letter and um, when we were headed that way and then the pandemic hit. All right, anyone else? All right, I'm feeling like this might be the end of discussion on this topic. I have a motion, I have a second. I will ask Mariah uh, to do a uh, vote, please. Patrick, can I ask one more question, oh, please? Oh, yes, Sorry. Sure. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Um, just because this is confusing, but so is Portsmouth has not, they have not voted on this agreement. This uh, is yeah. what, That's yeah. a good point, Polly. Thank you. So what we're going to do here today is again, the sub the little Compton subcommittee, um, listened to our professionals, the superintendent and the business manager who negotiated with Portsmouth superintendent and budget, uh, manager over there. And we came to a, we came to a consensus the three people voting members of the committee that this would be our best um, option and we're going to bring it to this full school committee so if we vote uh, vote it up then Portsmouth will have to will have that information and they will do I'm guessing put it on their agenda for a vote that would be my my assumption if we vote it down they won't have anything to put on their agenda for a vote. Um, so um, then we'll have to go out for an RFP. So if, if it fails, we're going for an RFP and we'll send a letter to Portsmouth. If uh, we vote it up and it, it approves, we'll give that information over to Portsmouth, um, probably the same way we've been dealing with them with the superintendent and business manager. And, uh, and they'll have to, to uh, uh, act on it, I would imagine. So uh, I'm just, where a vote, uh, an affirmative vote of this doesn't necessarily mean that this is the deal for the for the high school kids. Yeah, it's going to take two. It's going to take two for this party. Yeah. Now, yeah, if, if I may, they are voting um, on the twenty third. But if you recall, they had four other um, requests. They wanted to dissolve the current contract, which expires at the end of next year and create a new two-year agreement. They also wanted to, um, in that two-year agreement, they wanted to keep the tuition rate as it is right now for next year, 10,471, but they wanted a guaranteed minimum of 100 students. We said no. Uh, their third request obviously was the 13.5, which is 12.5% discount from Newport County CTE tuition rate. Uh, their, their fourth was this agreement would expire at the end of 2022-2023 school year. Any future agreement, if warranted, would need to be negotiated by both parties. And their fifth uh, request was the Portsmouth School Department attorney would draw up this new agreement. And so uh, the subcommittee rejected four of those requests and approved um, to bring forward to the full committee uh, the tuition up to 13.5, not necessarily 13.5, but up to. So uh, your subcommittee did play hardball. Um, and I think that was a good move. Um, and here we are. 
Any other questions? Mike, go ahead. You're on mute. Yeah. Holly, if I can just follow up to your um, your question is that based on what Larry was just saying that there was Wordsworth wanted to do the continuation of the 10 471 with a hundred uh, student minimum. But being that we weren't gonna actually send a hundred students, and if I and John not can correct me, I think it was 95, those extra five students that we would have been paying for. When we really wouldn't have been paying 10 471 for that, we actually would have been paying a higher amount per student. So that's why we didn't agree to the 100, 100 student minimum because it looks good on paper saying, Oh, yeah, we're gonna still uh, um, allow the 10 471, but we want to pay you're gonna pay us extra. And that's why we, we said no to that. So this is why we said, look, keep it at the 10 471 for the existing contract. That's why we said no to ripping up the existing one, right? And then just go to the one year um, at the higher rate just to get us out of this. Um, I don't know if that helps or not helps. It does help. I'm, I'm doing a little math right now, but um, my, my question was more so everyone understood that if we voted affirmatively, that it wasn't a done deal, that we could be back here in a month getting ready to send out an RFP. It was to be clear to everyone and to myself that that, um, that we that it wasn't a final vote really. It, it could, we could be sending RFPs out and looking for another high school um, either way. You can tell yourself, yes, that's right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Horsmith wants a two year with us, you know, you know, to vacate the current contract. And this school committee is offering just a one year emergency extension. So not to be, um, not to be a big jerk and I could be totally wrong, but um, I did have Mr. Mullins math um, at Wilbur school. And when I do um, 1074 times, 100 kids and divide that by 95, I still only get a little over 11,000 per student. That's, that's correct. Right. Yep. That's correct. Yep, it's 11,022 to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> Good math. Thanks. So um, can you just clarify why that isn't a better deal? Holly, that was that was for next year, the tenth year of the current contract. Okay. Okay. They wanted to vacate the current contract, end it at nine years. Okay. And draft a new two-year proposal that gave the first year, um, you know, the same tuition rate as is currently in the tenth year of the current proposal. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It did need clarifying though, it can't be confusing. Anyone else with a hand? Okay, I don't see a hand. I will ask Mariah to do a roll call. I have a motion, I have a second. Holly Allen? Aye. Hannah Ayotte? Aye. Mike Rocha? Aye. Rita Kenahan? Aye. Patrick McHugh. Aye. Okay, that passes unanimously five to oh. Thank you, uh, everyone. And thank you for me moving around the agenda. We're gonna go back up to where we left off for superintendent report. Wilbert McMahon school hybrid learning model. It's all yours, superintendent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll, I'll try to be as quick as possible. I do want to say, and I will be reporting out to the community tomorrow in a parent square um, message. Unfortunately, um, we did have a positive case today that was revealed through our weekly asymptomatic testing um, clinic. And our thoughts and well wishes are with the individual. And 
so we have an individual isolating and we have five others in quarantine. Our thoughts are with them as well. Um, if you're listening. On Monday, some good news on the vaccination front. Uh, I hosted a meeting in my office um, with Little Compton Fire Chief Rick Petron, Little Compton Meds Pod Coordinator Extraordinaire Rusty Cabot, Tiverton Fire Chief Bruce Rimels, and Tiverton School Superintendent Peter Sanchioni. And we strategized around um, planning a collaborative vaccination clinic for our pre-K through grade 12 um, teachers, administrators, um, support staff, uh, food services workers, bus drivers, monitors, everybody. And our umbrella even included um, those who run our after school daycare program in town and also little peeps. So I think there'll be some little peeps to, um, staff joining us Friday. Our first shot first clinic will be this Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. at Tiverton High School, where there's lots of parking. And I believe at this point, all of our interested staff members, um, and a lot of them, you know, uh, are interested, obviously, are registered and all set to go. I myself will um, be there getting my first shot. It is the Pfizer vaccine. And um, we're all happy with the efficacy rate, but it was very difficult to source. And I do believe the Department of Health definitely landed that plane in record time. So um, that is Friday, March 12th, three to six. It is just for Little Compton and Tiverton educators, licensed childcare providers, um, and anyone that were even substitutes, uh, regular substitutes, et cetera, et cetera. You want as many people vaccinated as possible. Shot number two comes April 1st, uh-huh, April Fool's Day. Um, and and that will that clinic will be earlier in the day. And I'm working out those details right now with a whip. Um, so in order to get all of our staff members uh, over there. So we're pretty happy. Um, Again, I have to thank you know, Tiverton school officials and also the fire department, but uh, Rusty Cabot for the win um, and Rick Petron. I just don't know how, um, how quickly and efficiently this would have been airborne if it weren't for them. So yes, we, we all social distance. I have a huge room for an office this year in the chorus room. So um, yeah, pretty happy. And uh, the meds pod that Little Compton and Tipperton have collaborated on has been a huge success. So we are leveraging that definitely. Um, and so that has been sort of a force multiplier in this uh, educator vaccination initiative. So thank you all of you who have um, volunteered uh, at the meds pod. I know some of you are on this call. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because we leverage that. You have been a force multiplier. And I noticed some of you will be there Friday. Um, so thank you, I saw your names on the list. Right now we have, um, let's see, at this point in September, we had 211 students in our census. We are now up to 218. We lost um, about 18 to 20 students to homeschooling and about nine to homeschooling. Um, and about nine up peers from our integrated preschool. So we would be close to 240 if it weren't for the pandemic. So we're 211 in September, we're up to 218 fully registered right now, which is excellent news. We were also at 84% in-person learners in September, we're up to 92%. We know that is a very personal decision on the part of every family. I myself as a mother would have sent one of my kids to in school uh, in person and one who has um, a comorbidity would not, you know, have gone until there was a vaccine and so forth. So I totally understand where our parents are coming from. Um, but those are our numbers and they're pretty encouraging. Every time I turn on the news, I hear about municipalities and entire states um, getting ready to send students back to school and Wilbur McMahon students have been in school since day one. And those who are at home have been pulled in in a very equitable distance learning experience thanks to our teachers, our principal and our IT director. 
The calendar for next year is still up in the air. I have re I received today the third or fourth version, I forgot, you know, I stopped counting, that RIDE has sent to schools as the 2022 unified school calendar. Uh, so tomorrow, Principal Whip and I will be meeting. We'll discuss the latest iteration of the 2022 school year calendar, and we will push something out to families, hopefully, um, and consult with staff and um, the various collectives, um, thus the, the employee support um, personnel and also our teaching collective, our um, LCTA um, executive board. And you know, once we go over the calendar for next year, we will out to families. So RIDE is designing the calendar, as you all know, but they've made some boo-boos. And so um, today we did get a new iteration of it and I'll be sending that out soon. Uh, let's see. And that's about it for our hybrid year roundup. Anything else to add, Sonia or Parents, teachers, we knocked it out of, we've definitely knocked it out of the park in Little Compton. And that's why we needed uh, Wellness Week. <laughs> um, there's not enough chocolate for our staff. So um, this, committee, this committee should be very proud of the work of the teachers, the support staff, and Principal Whip. Um, absolutely. Definitely. Um, four uh, four point two human resources update. That goes over to I, oh I don't see Carolyn. She's still here? No, I'm still here. Oh, there she is. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> this <laughs> um, aside from the Wellness Week activities, um, we've been in discussions with. Principal Whip about doing some um, possible postings uh, for some upcoming spring sports to possibly anticipate doing something for the kids for spring sports. And so look for more information coming down the pike on that um, in the next day or two. Thank you, Car Thank you Carolyn. Thank you, Superintendent uh, John McNamee. Finance report five one. Um, so we've completed uh, eight months through February 28th and we're looking at uh, a break even. Um, and that's uh, uh, pretty good considering the impact that COVID has had on the budget. I mean, our revenues are down 36,000. Uh, we've lost some tuition uh, students because of the pandemic. Our uh, state aid was down. Uh, salaries are up because our sub substitute expenses have gone up uh, uh, because of the need, increased need for subs, but also the rates have gone up. Uh, we've seen some increases in uh, technical and professional expenses relative to um, some of the curriculum programs for distance learning. And um, uh, we've, uh, transportation has been up as a result of the uh, contract, uh, the first year of the contract, which we had budgeted for at uh, about 5%, and that came in at a much higher percentage. So, But the good news is that's being all offset by savings um, in the Portsmouth High School line, where we had budgeted uh, 118 students, and we're down to, uh, I believe, 102 so we do have those savings there and we do have some savings in our special education out of district so uh at the end of the day we're we're looking at uh break even and uh, hopefully we could continue that uh, uh through the end of june any questions for john john i just want to uh, let everyone know what a great job you do for us uh and you're well uh, renowned around the state as a uh, excellent business manager. Did you know that? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. C committee report six one policy subcommittee. Um, Polly, should we uh, wait till we get down 
to yes. action items? Yes, please. You got it. Uh, Portsmouth School Committee liaison report, Rita. I really don't have anything else to say about Portsmouth High School right now. You got it, thank you. Uh, Recreation Committee, that would be me, uh, nothing to report. Wellness Committee, uh, Rita. Yes, we had a wonderful meeting uh, just yesterday, in fact, and I don't have to go into great detail because you heard all about the fabulous activities at Wellness Week. Uh, so that's going extremely well. We also talked about our, our COVID update included the great work that uh, our superintendent just recounted regarding testing and vaccinations. So that's looking spectacular. Uh, we had an update on nutrition and food services. Lots of people are getting breakfast at school now. We were, we were pleased with that. Uh, and then the last really important thing um, I wanted to talk about is the Rhode Island Healthy Schools Coalition. They're putting an advisory board together again. They haven't had this in maybe 10 years. And uh, so it's gonna really get a careful look. We're, we're gonna look at nutrition and fitness and including that in the SEL um, curriculum. So the coalition, uh, also has another program there sponsored by the American Di Diabetic Association. And there could be a lot of fun activities and some money that we could um, actually get to support some programs at the school. So good things happening in wellness. Thanks, Rita. And, uh, always an excellent job, thank you. I have public input coming up again. It's just uh, anyone like to raise their hand. Um, you have another chance to do it now. And if you don't, and you think of something, raise it before we adjourn. Uh, action items, consider discuss a vote to certify the school committee bylaws. Polly Allen. Four thing. So um, these are the original, by, well, not original, but they're the bylaws that were in effect in um, October, November. Um, while Hannah and I were reviewing the bylaws, which we do um, every election cycle, um, or the policy committee does, we realized that part of the bylaws say that they should be certified at the um, first committee meeting after the election. So um, for the sake of following the bylaws, we'd like to certify them but then you'll see it on the, um, the next item on the agenda, we're going to ask you to um, take a look at a first read of changes that we think should be made. In All right, let's follow the rules. So I entertain okay. a motion to certify the school committee bylaws. Do I have a motion? Moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. Roll call, Mariah. Holly Young. Aye. Anna Aya. Aye. Mike Rocha? Aye. Rita Canahan? Aye. Patrick McHugh? Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you, Polly. A2, consider discussing the vote to amend the school committee bylaws. This is a first read. We will not be voting. Go ahead, Polly. So I'm not sure if Mariah is going to pull it up. And I believe this is available on board docs for all to see? Is the draft available for everyone to see, Mariah? Yes. Okay. Super. So um, we just went in and made a few tweaks here and there, um, trying to clean things up. I know we had um, an issue with trying to, how we should schedule the first meeting after the election. It was so far away from the election and um, it seemed like we had to follow those rules but we wanted to give the option of um, the superintendent being able to call a meeting if needed. Um, we cleaned up some language, um, adding superintendent designee to a couple of places. Um, trying to go through here. Um, Clarifying emergency meetings, how emergency meetings could be called. Um, oh, I know, uh, under section three, um, clarifying secretary, because the former bylaws, the secretary um, was 
rather confusing. The secretary that was listed was really Mariah's role. Um, when the format of this policy, the way it goes is really Rita's role. So we tried to uh, clarify that. So it went in order of um, a format that was already existing. Um, let's see, moving along here. It's a big one. Um, sorry, going through pages here. Uh, we, we just clarified how you would um, get an item on the agenda. Um, tried to make it as simple as possible so that people feel free to um, be heard at meetings. Um, we did clarify a few things with John Anderson to make sure we were on course legally. Um, I guess that's about it. That's where mine, mine ends. Anything down further, Mariah? No, I think that sums it up. There weren't any major changes, just some um, housekeeping, some clarification. Um, anything different you can think of, Hannah? Just that um, we cleared it up that as part of our um, yearly professional development, we all have to make sure we have an hour of ethics work in there as well. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you ladies for that. Eight three, consider, discuss and vote to adopt the equity of excellence in education policy. This is a first read uh, do we have that policy uh, up, Mariah? So not only is this a first read, this is a brand new policy. Um, the superintendent um, attended a seminar, I guess, um, and was sparked to look through our policies to make sure we were covered on this and we were not. And it seems um, like a shame that we didn't have a policy that reflected this. Um, so um, she put it together. We had just a few tweaks. Um, and um, Hannah and I feel pretty good about this, I think. Superintendent, you wanna give any background to this? Sure. Um, you may remember the consultant uh, that the state, that the Department of Education uh, um, hired to assist districts with the reopening process and how to write reopening plans that were inclusive and, and, and all that. Um, well, they're called DM Group. They held a superintendent summit. It was the 18th annual superintendent summit and, <clears throat> of DM Group. And all Rhode Island superintendents got to go for free, whether we were um, members of um, this particular organization or not. And so many of us did attend and it was over two days. And the topic this year was equity in education, making it core. And we had breakout sessions and many of us realized that we didn't have um, any policy other than um, our policies around students with special needs, um, around hiring policy, you know, the hiring policy. We didn't have any policies. Um, I would say nine out of 10 districts, you know, in our breakout sessions that uh, locked in equity and excellence in education for all, all students, all staff. And a policy that also had a mechanism in place for continuous oversight of um, equitable practices of inclusive curricula. And so I looked around for um, exemplars out there. There, were, there weren't very many. And um, 
did come up with this. Um, the policy subcommittee of which I am a member, uh, they came up with some really good um, tweaks and I included those. So um, Polly and Hannah had some really good suggestions and I think we have a really good policy. I also included um, language around our out of district students. We also want them always to be treated equitably and fairly. And um, so that is some language that was added that reflects the uniqueness of Little Compton and our tuition program. Um, so here it is, that's the first read. I would like um, John Anderson to lay his papers on there. Um, not necessarily right this moment, this is only a first read, but to just let us um, know what he thinks. A member of the community did question that this might put some at us, put us at some liability. Um, I can't see where, and I can share that offline with you, John. Um, but of course, we'd like you to take a look and make sure that it's all cool. Be happy to do that. Thank you. All right, any other questions on that one? Thank uh, you, Joe. Go right ahead. I'm sorry, Patrick. The last one on, I'm sorry, the, the previous one to this. The bylaws. Sorry, is there a discussion on that, on that last one? That was a, that was a first read. And yes, we can discuss it. Can I just make one comment on that? Sure, go ahead. Under the uh, secretary section, that last paragraph in there, I'm, I'm sorry, the last sentence in the paragraph that struck out, I would ask that that be not, that that remain just as it is on the vice chair and chair, please. Polly, did you note that uh, request? Yeah, I'm busy talking over here. Mute. Yes. Yep. Sure thing. Thank you. Nothing against you, Rita. <laughs> All right. Anything else? I'm going to go uh, eight five to consider, discuss, and vote to approve any request for information from administrative and/or legal counsel via roll call. Do I have anything for our uh, professionals? Not seeing any, thank you. Nine one, consider a vote to adjourn via roll call. Why don't we do roll call? Go ahead. Holly Allen. Aye. Hannah Ayer. Aye. Mike Rocha. Aye. Rita Kenahan. Aye. Patrick McHugh. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you everyone for your time. Have a great night.